This is an excerpt from the book, Connecting People with Art, by Evelyn Redcross and Mercer Redcross. The book is available at octobergallery.com. Building an Industry. Edward Robertson and Things Graphics. In our early years we at October Gallery sold art in both the retail and wholesale markets. We marketed and distributed to individuals, galleries and dealers. While our retail business was galloping along, wholesale and distribution were just maintaining a trot. There were many possible reasons for this. As we look back, we believe that we dedicated more time and assets to retail and that it was more difficult to climb two mountains at one time. However, the main reason might well have been the presence of Things Graphics and Fine Art in Washington, D.C., a distributor of fine African-American prints. Owner and President Edward Robertson was the first to dedicate his business solely to the publishing, marketing and distribution of African-American art. And no matter how hard October Gallery tried to gain market share, we could not surpass the company that would eventually become the number one African-American art distributor in the nation. Robertson opened Things Graphics in 1984 with a vision that African-American art could be distributed throughout the country. Utilizing a distribution structure similar to that of traditional art in the U.S. As a major publisher for artists through the 1980s and 90s, Robertson was responsible for jumpstarting and supporting the careers of many artists who are well known today. Robertson marketed to galleries large and small across the U.S. He expanded into new markets and new galleries as he traveled and promoted artists. We salute Robertson and his contribution to the development of today's African-American art industry. To reiterate, many artists are nationally known as a result of Things Graphics and Mr. Robertson. Here are quotations from two of the numerous artists who benefited. As a visual artist who has been painting for 30 years, when I first discovered an African-American owned art business, I was very excited. I will always support things graphics and fine art because they were there at the beginning when we, black artists, needed support. Artist Frank Frazier. In 1984, Things Graphics and Fine Art, in Washington DC set out to establish a market for African American art. By serving not only as a distribution point, but also as a resource to dealers and artists. Ed, Robertson, President, was one of the first people I met that was interested in publishing pieces of black art. I was impressed with his tenacity and with his basic urgency to distribute black artwork at a level where most people could afford to purchase it. Artist Paul Goodnight. In the 1980s most galleries were owned by entrepreneurs, not artists, and obtained product from distributors like Things Graphics. By 1995, African American art galleries had started to change over. Artist-owned galleries began to replace entrepreneur galleries. More and more artists entered the marketplace, and interestingly, they began to open art galleries for themselves. They also began to self-publish. This market change created new and, sometimes, difficult competition for entrepreneur galleries and distributors. From the artist's point of view, it seemed they could better manage their finances in the market, to some degree, by controlling their own product. Those entrepreneur galleries that did not close and wanted to survive needed to reposition themselves. It seemed difficult to maintain the African-American art gallery business unless the gallery was multifaceted dealing in market sectors, including art sales, individual and corporate, service, framing, gift items and education. Another commerce shift was about to affect the industry. As artists searched for additional income sources, they learned that the art patron wanted to meet them and purchase their product directly. These face-to-face -face encounters reinforced their reasons for leaving the sanctuary of their studios. Maintaining the overhead of gallery operations and or traveling throughout the country to art events. In the last 25 years, the growth and development of our very young African-American art industry has made frequent shifts. It has established itself as a necessary part of the culture at large. More importantly, the industry has established itself as an essential part of African-American culture. Are there new twists and turns on the horizon for the industry? Only time will tell. As artists evolve and as the marketplace requires more sophisticated operational business models from them, these creative persons may opt for more creative time in the studio and less time working the business model. This may cause the economic pendulum to swing again, and companies such as Things Graphics and the entrepreneurial galleries, retrofitted with new business models, may grow and thrive again.